rhythm. And you, you are the, the rhythm. Once again, welcome to Market at the Shits. And I told you we're bringing you the best of the best. Um, today we just had a crazy performance and a wonderful performance from Brandon Praise. Oh my gosh, this guy has been followed on Instagram, Twitter, you name all the social media. And today he's doing it here at Market at the Sheds. Brandon, what's up, man? I'm good, man. Such Thank an you. honor to be here. I didn't know about this place because I'm a Joburg. <laughs> Obviously, I'm mostly in Joburg, but Pretoria is a vibe. Yeah, ne? crazy. Yeah, I know. Uh, but the performance that you just had right now, you just captured a lot of people. You could see the ambience before you even went on stage that you have a lot of following. So if you had to classify yourself, what kind of a musician are you? Oh, Ash, it's tricky because like, I think these days um, with social media and everything, there's like, there's like being a musician and there's being a brand. And I think for me, uh, I've been blessed enough to be able to grow my brand so that people kind of have a bigger understanding of who I am as a person. And, and so music is an extension of that. So a lot of people will follow me um, for my family content or my podcast with my wife or yeah. like all that stuff. So it's kind of like it's all just one big thing. So I think that's what kind of grows your following uh, I mean, social. And I think a lot of artists should look into kind of giving more of yourself instead of just kind of being this mysterious yeah, musician. Yeah. Like I, I think feel you. people love knowing about the artist. But when did you start? When did Brandon start now realizing that I'm a musician, I want to play keyboard and I want to sing? When did all that start? To be honest, I think it started, um, obviously I did Idols 10 years ago. Yeah. And I had my own ideas when I was doing that, but I really didn't know who I was. So I think when I changed my name from Brandon to Brandon Praise, um i sort of needed to rebrand myself as to who i am what am i about and so i started focusing on everything that i did have the tools that i have i think a lot of times you look at stuff and you're like i can't do this i can't do that but when you really look closely there's things that you have and for yeah. me i had a little bit of a following from that i the idols the idols thing yeah I so then the i used that to build up um like a following and people and and i used all my skills like I married at a young age, started talking about that. I, I had kids and started sharing my fatherhood journey. Yeah. And so then I incorporated the music as well. So it's kind of like just rebranding and, and, yeah. and building from scratch. So would you say Idols created a platform for you to actually venture deeper into your musical journey with the experience I think of course? It did. Yeah, I think for me, I mean, I grew up in a small town. So uh, that, was the only, that was the only way I could have ever gotten uh, to a platform where I could then work um, with at the time Black Motion and that's kind of what put me into the scene when yeah. they did Joy Joy so they wouldn't have discovered me if I if I didn't do the idol yeah, thing yeah. so you. it gave me visibility yeah, yeah. yeah. So I'm like approaching them without having anything in 100%. your hands like I'd done something so I had something to show yeah. um, beforehand so yeah, yeah it made it easier but what are the challenges you know, you know I know we've been in a season whereby there was COVID and we had to chill be in the house use the creativity what challenges would you say Brandon Praise has had just to say, okay, fine, you know what? I'm giving up on this music thing. I wouldn't say it's been challenges. Funny enough, I think COVID is really what um, sort of gave me a bit of a boost because I was already creating content digitally. Okay. So when COVID hit, for me, I already had the tools. I already had the equipment. I already have the cameras. I already do the stuff. It's already right. part of my life. So when a, a lot of musicians are sort of trying to transition to have an online presence like i already had that i was already doing covers on social media i was doing stuff on tiktok i was doing stuff on instagram yeah. so when people were at home on their phones they like my watch, numbers yeah. they kept growing so it just showed me that as an artist you don't have to be one dimensional yeah that's there's true. different ways you know and, and someone else's journey might not be your journey so for me mm. i realized that i was in a very privileged position uh unknowingly but it worked in my favor okay are you working on something new right now? Always, but right now I'm, <laughs> I'm dropping my album, um, Malama Ala. So okay. just to give context, like we started, uh, myself and Murda started working on two projects. Uh, his album, Asante, uh, from like September. Actually, we did his album in one month and then we started working on my album immediately after. So we've really just been locked in. Myself, Murda, Mohao Keys, okay, yeah. uh, Tagzin, um, who am I forgetting? Mpo Wave. Mpo Wave is my boy. Um, who else is on the album? I don't want to. Oh, Atmos Black. Atmos Black. So I worked yeah. a lot with a lot of young producers, um, mostly just producers, because this is for me. Okay, it's not my first album, but I feel like it's the first 
real album that I'm putting out where that's I'm gonna be an expression of yourself. I'm fully involved. I own it. I'm independent. You know, oh, I own the masters. Oh. That sort of thing. So it's it's really my first album. So I wanted to kind of make more about me, and I think the next project will have features. But do you have like a tour set up for the whole thing? Are you gonna expand it? Let people hear it because I mean, you know, the challenges that we had and that we're still having is that people sometimes they subscribe to the music, but they never literally are at the show. Yeah. Because of the distance. Like I'm a boy. I I was born in the free state. But when you come from the free state, you're in Pretoria. That's like you're in Cape Town. Yeah, for you sure. Understand. Yeah, yeah. So, do you have a map that is drawn to say, okay, fine, you're dropping the album on Thursday. So, how do you plan to take the music now to the people? So for me, it's I think you gotta do it by phases. And the biggest thing about doing this album was there was a lot of demand online for it. So essentially, when I drop this album, or when I drop it now. I'm dropping it for the people. I'm dropping it for my fans, current fans that already know the Brendan's Brendan Prey story, that already come to the shows. I'm making music for those people, and then I think that's when then you start to build from that. Yeah. Once you have, you know, once you feed your core, your core fan base. I always say like, because a lot of artists will come up to me and be like, "Yo, bro, I need a feature. I just need a big break." And for me, it's like if you have three friends, and those friends aren't crazy about your stuff. You're not pushing it enough because you should that's treat true. those three people like three million people because that's the only way so for me that's how i'm approaching this i already have a fan base i already have i mean we just dropped two singles i think we did we're doing something like eighty thousand streams first week which is dope um yeah so there's already like a fan base yeah, and yeah. so for me it's starting with the people who have been there from day one and then yeah. sort of growing that organically to other people because also yeah. slow growth is sustainable yeah yeah, yeah. So, on social media, where can people find out what's happening about the album? Social media, um, Brendan underscore praise. Ah, there's details everywhere. Uh, Instagram, <laughs> Just type Brendan praise Twitter, on Google just and just get everything. Type Brendan underscore praise. <laughs> you see all that stuff. Um, yeah, I'm out there. Um, I'm big on Instagram, Facebook, and TikTok. Not so much Twitter. I don't like Twitter. Okay. Uh, but I'm there, but like, not really. <laughs> Any specific reason for uh, that? I just find that it's not a positive platform. Oh yeah. I don't think people go on Twitter to find positive things. People yeah. go there to see what's trending. Yeah, yeah. And usually what's trending it's usually like negative stuff. Yeah. Or someone cool. did something. It's yeah. so for me it's like I don't wanna fill my mind up with that energy. Yeah. I just wanna be like I wanna keep my energy space yeah. clear. Brendan, thank you so much for coming to the show. We really loved your performance and we'll keep on following you. We'll also upload it on the page to let people know that you're dropping on Thursday. 100%. Thank you so much for coming to I the show, I will need to bro. do it again. Next time, do it unplugged. <laughs> thank you so much. <laughs>